Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming back to another Be Connected session. Today we're going to be going on a virtual tour with Google Earth. Um, once again, uh, my name's Emily. Hello, hello. Um, I'm a customer experience officer over at the Hallett Cove Library, part of the Marion Library Service. Um, and I'm very excited to deliver another Be Connected session with you today. I'm especially excited about this one um, because I find that when I go on Google Earth, it's always a great time. So. Um, this is going to be a lot easier, kind of relaxed session, um, not too difficult for most people, but please, if you have a question, pop it in the question and answer box um, or pop it in chat and other people might be able to answer it for you as well. Um, but I'll definitely be going to questions at the end of the session. Shouldn't take too long, so tuck in, grab a cup of tea or something like that um, and we'll get on an adventure. Let's go. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to start off with the Be Connected website. We always start off with Be Connected because that's what I'm, the framework I'm building off of is from the Be Connected website. Um, and we'll go into it in just a tick. Then we'll look into exploring Google Earth. So the very general basic idea of what is Google Earth um, and how to use it and where you can find it, which device do you use it on? Um, and all those questions will be answered. Uh, we'll jump onto Google Voyager, uh, an aspect within Google Earth, a program that you can use um, that does sort of a curated um, voyage around the globe. So um, it jumps around to different places, locations. It's a lot of fun. Um, kind of just having like a virtual tour guide already set up for you from the comfort of your own home or work office, depending where you are. Um, and now we'll look into, after that, we'll go into Google Arts and Culture, a um, subsidiary of Google Earth. Um, it's made by Google. It's just a separate website, but it works in tandem with Google Earth to curate more um, museum pieces, um, uh, artwork, um, art gallery tours, as well as um, virtual reality um, tours of other locations like the Sydney Opera House. You can go for a wander through the actual empty opera house. Um, very much end of the world style. When there's <laughs> no one left on the planet but you. Um, and then we'll jump into questions at the very end. So feel free to throw down questions as we go through. Um, I'll be checking every now and then, but I'll definitely get to all of them at the very end of the slides. So let's get started. Be connected. Woo! All right. So we'll start off with um, going through Be Connected and what it offers. Um, everything that I show today can be taught through Be Connected um, and Be Connected offers a broad range of uh, topics, very self-paced. You just go at however many you want to pick and choose from, um, easy to use, and you can sign up and track your training um, and that way it can tick off some boxes for you, totally optional. So if I can get the tech to work, I'll jump over to a different screen share. Here we go. Aha, excellent. There we go. So be connected. You just have to chuck in, be connected into Google if you're looking for it and it'll bring up this home page. So what I'll be jumping into today is available from the topic library. And through here, you can find just about anything about getting online and getting started in tech, especially. We um, haven't run through this before, but it's a great starting place for someone, especially if you know someone that elderly or just doesn't know about current technology. It's not hard to find someone like that. We're everywhere. <laughs> I have the luxury of being born in the era where this sort of stuff is totally normal. Um, but of course, this is what we can provide to get people online and feeling confident in their online skills. So what we're doing today, we're skimming past all of these. We're going into online hobbies because we're having a bit of fun today. <laughs> So jumping into this, click explore in the purple section here. Here we go. And we're going to be looking into exploring Google Earth. And then going into Google Arts and Culture and all these extra apps you can use. So let me jump back into my slides, if it will let me. Let's see if it's going to be nice about it. There we go. Okay, it's all working smoothly apparently. Please let me know if anything drops out. <laughs> and I'll try to pick it back up again. Excellent, so we've gone through Be Connected. Highly recommend that website. All right, so Google Earth, how do I get Google Earth? Where is it? Um, so what we're looking at, what I'll ask first is what kind of device do you use? Do you have access to a home desktop computer or a laptop? If that is a yes, jump onto um, your Chrome browser. It only works on Chrome. 
So if you have Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, you're going to need to download Chrome. You can do that from any browser anyway. Just say, I like the Chrome app. Most devices um, will come with Chrome already installed. It's sort of one of the basics, um, one of the standard level browsers. Um, people prefer it. It's quite effective and trustworthy. Um, and it doesn't falter or fall out very often at all. Um, so Chrome's only going to work because it's a Google product. Google Maps, uh, sorry, Google Earth only wants to work on Chrome. So jump onto Chrome, look up Google Earth, or you can use the link I've supplied here, um, google.com forward slash earth, and you'd find it there. And we'll jump onto what that looks like in just a second. Or if you've got a tablet device, which could be anything from like, um, oh, there's my screen, Android or um, an iPad. So I say Android, like a Samsung, I've got a Lenovo tablet here. Anything that's non-Apple will be Android. So jump onto your either App Store, so um, Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just type in Google Earth and it's got this lovely blue Earth symbol that you download from. So you're welcome to do that now while I'm chatting. It doesn't take very long to do as long as you've got an internet connection, which if you're listening to me, you do. Excellent. Okay, so that's how you access it. From there, we're going to jump onto... I did a little arrow key here. Boop. I'm gonna look into exploring Google Earth. We'll start with the basics. So what I'll do, rather than showing you on my tablet, a few things I will jump onto the tablet here because they're just easier to show. I'm gonna jump back over to my browser here when it lets me. Let's see if it's gonna be nice. Let's go with this one. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I'm still getting used to using Zoom. All right, let's jump over. So finding Google Earth, just search it in your browser. It'll be right there at the very top, especially if you're using a Google search. Um, Google wants you to grab their stuff. Google's going to put Google Earth at the top. So when you click through Google Earth, this is what you see. And from here, you can just hit launch Earth. Because you're using it in a Chrome browser, it's going to work totally fine, seamlessly, no slip ups. The only time it's going to judder and freak out is when you've got sort of a shoddy internet speed, which can happen for most of us. <laughs> Mine cuts out a lot of the time. Not today, not today, being very good. Um, but yeah, depending on your speed, it'll change how well it loads and how things move. So for you watching at, um, at home or home office, um, when I move my globe, this might cut out for you. I was testing this earlier um, and it was more juddery than smooth. So. As long as the picture stays, I'm happy with that. So how do you use Google Earth? Um, we've got a sidebar here that I want us to all look at at the moment. This is um, your easy access panel for everything. Um, we'll look at a few things today. I'll try to get to everything, quite frankly, because it's not too difficult once you've given it a go. Um, but first, we'll give an overview of what we're looking at to begin with. So we've got the big globe right in the middle. Um, now, if you might find it's too big, um, you can zoom out. So come down to this bottom corner here, bottom right hand corner. <laughs> I'm pointing, but I know the mouse is there. And we'll press zoom out. Nice and simple. Zoom out, zoom in, bigger, smaller. And from here, we can click and drag on our globe. So if you give it a click and pull it around, you can travel to the other side of the world very easy, very quickly. And we're on the sunny side of the earth, so <laughs> everything's nice and bright. So say we wanted to go to, oh goodness me, Africa, woohoo! Now from here, we've found our globe. If you find that you ever get turned upside down, look down to this small symbol here, it's a compass symbol. It'll reorientate your earth to point upward of north. So that's normally how on maps you would view your earth, with north pointing up. <laughs> yep, fairly self. <laughs> self-explanatory. So you get a small image of your globe in the bottom right hand corner. Um, it's a grayscale version that shows you the countries very simply. And then you can click zoom in to get closer. As you do, you notice the clouds part. So this is all, um, I don't know if this is current day clouds, I'd have to look that up. You can get a different version of Google Earth, which is Google Earth Pro, which is a downloadable program that you get onto your actual desktop computer. Um, and that can show you live weather and forecasts and what's coming around the bend, essentially. Um, and you can change night and day and see what happened across the day. Um, we're not going to look at that today. It's fairly involved. And I was giving it a go earlier today. And I even I found it a bit overwhelming to look at. So this is, we're going to have fun today. 
I'm not doing homework today. It's going to be a fun time. So looking to zoom in, again, plus and minus symbol, the clouds part. Let's zoom into Madagascar. This might be a bit small for you to read on your screen, small on mine. Um, but as we get closer, things should clear up a bit easily, more easily. In addition, if you don't like clicking the zoom in, zoom out button as much, I have a scroll wheel on my mouse. So if I go zoop, zoop, zoom in and out. And you'll notice that it zooms in on the mouse. So say um, I'm in the Mozambique channel over here. I'm hovering on it and then I zoom in. It'll take me over there. So wherever your mouse is, Google Earth's gonna try and get you there. So that's a simple way to navigate. Click and pull, move around. Now I'm gonna quickly jump onto my tablet device here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in comparison on a tablet. So pardon the glare, this might be a bit hard to show. And I might, I don't know how to make myself bigger on your screen, unfortunately. I could do full size. Let me do that for a hot second. There we go, big me again. Okay, cool. I'm not sure if this is helpful at all. <laughs> I would love if I could plug it in and show you, but it is essentially a mirror image of what you get in the desktop version. Um, some techniques are different. So instead of clicking zoom, zoom, minimize, minimize, to take it in and out, you do a pinch action. So pinching it closed does this, and then pulling it open will bring it closer. So sort of similar to how you might view a photo, make it larger or smaller on a screen pinch and zoom, and then swipe just to travel. Nice and simple, really fun. I have a great time on this, love spinning the globe. <laughs> and all the functions you get on the desktop version, you also get on the tablet. So it's nice and streamlined. Beautiful, back to the globe on our desktop computer. Now we're gonna have a look at finding a location. How do you find somewhere? Um, say if you wanted to learn about Paris, Ah, the city of love, shall we go? <laughs> you come up with all these suggested answers. Again, this might be very small on your screen, and I don't know about the resolution through Zoom at the moment, um, but my top answer here is Paris, France. So let's give that a click, and you'll notice our globe will go for a spin. Here we go. Woo! And it takes us all the way in, zooms us right into the capital. Goodness, it's a big city. <laughs> expansive, beautiful. So what we find here, you've got roads, roadmaps. So not only is Google Earth just great fun, you also get um, roadmaps to use as well. So similar to Google Maps that you get on your phone, say if you're traveling around, um, this is the expanded on version of that essentially. Awesome. I think I have, oh, someone's in chat. Let's have a look. <laughs> I'm having too much fun today, my problem. Sorry, everyone, thank you for waiting. Let me jump into chat. Okay, my chat's gone. Mm, that's not what I was pressing. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll get into chat soon, hopefully. There it is. Let's see. Oh, someone's just being very kind. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. So nice. Okay, let's continue. You'll notice that we've got more than just roadmaps, we've got location markers, um, sightseeing spots, but in the right hand corner you'll also notice um, this little tile here. This is a card from Wikipedia um, and what it does, it gives you the basic information on the location you're viewing. I'm going to try and make my screen smaller. Actually now I've hit the enlarge button, that'll work better. Okay. Let me know if that's still too small to read. It's very big on my screen. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Okay, so you get this title card, top right hand corner, and it gives you um, a brief in little intro to the place you're looking at. Um, you'll get more information depending on what you're looking up. Um, your hometown may have very little written about it, but somewhere like Paris that is extremely well known will have a whole little chapter set through. So if I give it a click, we'll get more information. It'll open up a title card, information straight from wiki so it lets you know it's the capital of france gives you the size population size oh notable universities interesting and points of interest of course and from here i'll i might save this for just a little bit um, but it'll take you right to there um, that location and you can explore it further so this really is a tool to explore with you can plan trips with it 
um, it really is a lot of fun. And I do recommend going around and just clicking whatever looks interesting. <laughs> there are no real rules to this. Um, it's an app for fun and entertainment. And you can even add it to a project. We'll look at projects in a bit. We'll look at projects now. <laughs> Adding it to a project will, let's say, so we're doing a Europe holiday in the distant future, let's say. <laughs> And we're gonna add it to, let's just do new project. And the new project title is holiday. Holiday. Beautiful. And we'll save that. And we won't put it in our Google Drive, that's okay. Google wants you to link up everything, but we'll just leave it as is today. So to find our projects, I think it's this one here. Here we go. So we'll look at the side panel now, now that we've sort of had a very brief overview of zooming, finding a location. Let's jump down into projects, for example, just over here. Let's open one of our projects and see if it's there. Okay, never mind. I might leave it for now. <laughs> it's not behaving the way I thought it would. Okay, let's jump into, let's do another search. Um, at home or at your desk, wherever you are, um, if you're on the browser now, search up a location, find somewhere. Let's go to, let's go Brighton Jetty. SA. Jetty Road Brighton SA. Let's have a look. Let's go back to Adelaide. Whee! <laughs> there we are. And you get this cute little faux 3D model that'll spin on you to begin with. Um, you'll notice that it's sort of, it does its best at doing different height levels. So here we've got the train tracks and Jetty Road running through the centre. Got the Windsor somewhere. Which one is the Windsor? I'd say it's this one here, 29. Oh no, no, this one in here, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just having a lot of fun here. Um, it'll give you this sort of faux um, 3D view. Um, I say faux because it does its best to level the heights of trees and houses, and it really does look quite good. They throw down some shadows um, that were there when they took the original satellite image. Um, it's a mix of satellite and then aerial imaging. It depends on if they're taking specific photos of a major landmark or just using um, the satellite images they do every few years. Um, I've noticed they've updated them a couple times since I looked for it the first time in early 2000s. Um, but yeah, they use different images and they'll go through. So let's zoom down to the, have a look at that little 3D version of the jetty. I love that. It's like a tiny model. That's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how to grab your location. It'll give you the exact um, latitude and longitude, whichever way that is. And it gives you a little title card, but of course this one has very little on it. I don't think there's a Wikipedia page for a Brighton Jetty uh, or Jetty Road, Brighton, but it does give you locations that other people have searched for in the area, which can be quite fun to sort of see. oh, didn't think other people would be looking at the Brighton Chevy Bakery, of course. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Let's jump into, I'll just see if I, so those are the basics. Let's jump to a different screen now. New share. Have a look. Back to our PowerPoint. Here we go. So we've done our basics. We've zoomed in and out. I haven't done Street View. I should go back and do Street View. Okay, let's do that. Street view is a great time. Um, I highly recommend giving it a go, especially on your own street. See what your house looked like several years ago or a month ago, whenever they took the photo. Um, when they do go around taking photos, what it looks like, and you may have seen this in person or on TV, it looks like um, a car that Google owns. They drive it through the streets and on top is a dome. And on that dome is a camera that can film, film take photos in 360 degrees. So it'll drive around, take photos of everything, and I'll show you what that looks like. So when you're ready, I'll just change the tilt. Here we go. To change the tilt and the angle on a desktop computer, you hold shift and then click around. So shift and then sliding it around. That'll change it back from this sort of 3D view. We can go all the way to the Adelaide Hills, um, and then you can tilt it back forward Whoop. like that. And I'm going to hit north to make it mm. So delicious. I love that. <laughs> love a beautifully snapped grid. Okay, let's jump into street view. So let's go somewhere. Let's go, let's, let's go down the beachfront. I imagine they've driven a car down there. 
In the bottom right hand corner, once again, we go to our little wheel of choice choices. Um, you see this little man here. This will be how we enter Street View. You can either give him a click and that'll just jump down to the nearest street near you, or you can click and drag him. So you see he turns yellow as he drags and you get the streets turning blue. This is where um, cars or um, people holding um, cameras attached to their, like rigged up to themselves, where it's a steady camera and it'll take photos as they walk through. Um, you can find uh, wildlife sanctuaries and walking paths that have done that. Instead of a car driving through, it's got a person walking through with this extremely heavy gear. Um, we appreciate their service for doing so. So I'm going to drop it onto any part of a blue path, depending on where you'd like to land. I'm going to land on the roundabout. Let's have a look at the arch there. Arch of Remembrance. Here we go. Woohoo! So from this point, you can see it might be, it's very hard for you to see, but what I can see are watermarks placed on the images that have been taken by Google. And this is um, copyright 2016 Google. So this is how it looked four years ago. And it looked like a fairly, you know, the sea doesn't look all that blue. <laughs> might have been winter. I see people in coats today. Beautiful. So from here, again, clicking and dragging is how you're going to get around the world. So same thing with using a finger. I'll jump back onto my iPad. Sorry tablet on the iPad and I'll give you, I'll try and show what it looks like when we get down to Adelaide somewhere. One moment. Here's Adelaide. Let's go down Glenelg today. So same thing, we've got the coastline and in the bottom right hand corner we've got a set of symbols. So we've got the, um, the compass that turns north our 3D map to turn on and off 3D view. We'll just leave it on for now. It's a bit of fun. And then we've got a little person. So again, pulling him out, dragging him along, and then putting him anywhere you see blue lines. Of course, this is extremely zoomed out, so there are a lot of blue lines, but I'm going to try and throw him down on Glenelg. All right, it's going to zoom in for me. I think very slowly. Here we go. Whee! And we're on Glenelg Beach, I think. Where are we? Oh, we're at the very start of the jetty, the hopscotch path. You can give it a turn. So again, no clicking required on a tablet. You're just dragging with your finger, nice and easy. Cool. We've got the jetty there. Beautiful. You can tell I've got the beach on my mind. <laughs> so we'll jump back to our view on the screen here. It's all the same for you. It's all on the screen. And we'll scroll around. So scrolling through, clicking and dragging, you'll get a 360 view. Again, that camera took enough images to make up a whole 360 view that you can spin around with. And from here, you can, you can even see the shadow of the car that was there. So you can see the outline of the car and the camera that sits on top taking pictures as he goes. So let's travel down the, up the Esplanade, if it'll let me. Usually it will. Hmm. There we go. Okay, what I'm doing, if it doesn't work right away, I'm looking for these arrows at the bottom of the screen. There are two arrows here, forward and backward. And if I turn, they'll orientate to stay in line with the road. Oh, it's rubbish day. <laughs> Have a look, there's a bin right there. You'll note that as you move along different places, the longer you're traveling, um, you'll notice that the time of day will change, the season. Um, and that's just because they've got kind of a patchwork of images. They're really doing their best to keep things up to date. But of course, they can't do everywhere at once. So it's a slow process of um, old images meeting new images and catching up eventually. So I'm going to click the arrow to travel down the street and just get sort of a view of what the world looked like at this time. And again, this time I can see copyright 2019 Google, which is last year. That's what the world looked like. Very cool. And you can go about this anywhere there are blue lines on your map and you can travel all the way through. Someone in their roadster came by. Very cool. It is a lot of fun, um, especially fun to do street view um, on your own home street and see what your house looked like at that time. Um, I have several pictures I've looked through where my cats have been out the front or our roof has been a different color, things like that. It's really fun. So if we've had enough of that, we'll get out of street view by just clicking the little man who's now yellow in the bottom right hand corner. We'll click him just to release us from street view and we get pulled out again. Beautiful. Okay, so those are the basics. Street View is especially one that I love exploring, really fun. 
Um, but we're going to jump back into our slideshow now. So let me see. Yes. Um, and we'll continue on looking at Google Voyager. Google Voyager and Google Arts and Culture. We'll jump into Voyager first. Um, Google Arts and Culture is a separate app, and I'll show you that in just a tick. Um, but I find that it's incredibly fun. There's a lot to explore on it. Um, it takes what's great about Google Earth and just keeps adding to it. Um, Google Voyager within Google Earth um, is sort of like one step behind Google Arts. So it goes Google Voyager, then Google Arts is up here in educational value at least. That's what I see. Um, but let's jump in. It's very easy to get into, a lot of fun. So let's jump back to my Google Earth. Here we go. So to get into Voyager, look at your side left-hand panel. We've got the search icon and here is a little, now I don't know the name of it, it's a ship steering wheel. <laughs> the ship wheel of a ship. Um, there'll be a name that I'm not aware of, but you click on that little Voyager symbol. Let's just call it that. Open that up and it'll bring up a whole bunch of panels and um, a few of the um, editor's picks of the day of just brilliantly curated information. So what these are, they're more than just sort of infographics they'll take you around the locations of these places um, and update you on things that they're trying to teach you um, say we're interested in let's do cherry blossoms around the world that sounds good so give it a click or any other that catches your eye at the time here we go cherry blossoms around the world to catch a glimpse of some of the world's most scenic sakura spots recommended by locals who review places on Google Maps. So this isn't just Google curating its own stuff. These are local guides who live in the area and know all these tips and secrets just by living there. So we're going to go to Tokyo, Japan. We go for a fly around the world. You can see our little tracking spots coming up. Okay, I wonder how that looks for you guys. It kind of jutted for me at that last second. Here we go. So it gives you on the right hand side, again, that's sort of not a wiki panel, um, but a little tableau almost explaining um, what the local guides have to say and then just giving you general information. And what you can do, um, you can jump right into scrolling through as we did before on Street View and go for a walk and admire the scenery, the location, kind of breathe in that atmosphere, um, especially when you're stuck inside all day. This can be a lot of fun. Um, kind of getting out of the house in a, a sort of a digital way um, and seeing places you may not have a chance to see if you're extremely busy all day, for example. <laughs> so on the right hand side, we've got that curated panel and you hit at the very bottom, there is a one out of 10 slide marker. So we're gonna hit the right hand arrow on the slide and we're gonna travel through. And it'll take us to the next sightseeing spot to see cherry blossoms. You get a lovely major image on the top section of this panel. Um, and then, oh my God, that's incredible. <laughs> looks so good. <laughs> and you'll get to see the actual scenic site. And you can see many other people here taking photos at the same time, of course. Very cool. And by traveling through here, you'll not only jump between the images one person took, it'll jump between different cameras of other people who were there on the day and share their image with Google. So you can go continue on with this. We're going to go to Paris again. Paris keeps coming up today. Here we go. So apparently the park behind the Notre Dame Cathedral is one of the most popular spots to enjoy cherry blossoms in the city. Beautiful. Very cool. I don't have much more to say on that. I just love Voyager. Let's jump back into Voyager and have a look at a separate one. So not only do they do sort of trips around the world, virtual tours. They'll also do some brilliant infographic sort of work um, and incredible educational content. So up top here, so if I scroll all the way back up to the top of Voyager, again, Voyager can be found using the little ship steering wheel symbol on the left-hand panel. Open it up again. Um, scrolling to the top are the editor's picks of the day. So ones that Google editors have gone through um, and really given the stick thumbs up of approval. Tick of approval, that's the term. Um, and they include things like quizzes, games, um, even things like celebrating Harry Potter, for example. And underneath, you can see a whole strip of additional content to look through. So on the far right, you've got education. This can be great fun for people who are stuck at home and looking to um, 
stimulate the mind and keep yourself busy, including things like poetry, you know, schools in different countries. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Buildings inspired by nature, things like that. Um, you really learn a lot that you wouldn't think to look up yourself. This sort of content you just really wouldn't find anywhere. It's totally, it feels totally random in what it's showing you, but it's all linked together with using Google Maps to travel through to the locations um, and show you more. So if we're going to be jumping into culture, um, this will start seeping into Google Arts and Culture content. Of course, Google Arts and Culture are a linked site with Google, um, Google Earth, and they use both of their content on both sides. So if you're not using one or the other, you're going to be getting the benefits of both. It just sort of depends on how you like to use um, your Google Earth experience. So that's Voyager, a lot of fun. I'll show you games very briefly. <laughs> Um, they've got a series of quizzes, including animal sounds, <laughs> which I love. Rock and roll icons. Let's jump into that. You can all be very disappointed in my rock knowledge. Let's have a look. Here we go. So yeah, it just opens up like a regular sort of fun game, but it's going to be using Google Maps the whole time. So for example, in which studio did Elvis Pre Presley first start his recording career? I'm going to say Memphis. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to finish the quiz. I'm going to leave on a high note or I win. And it takes you, of course, to the location and you can get, you can even just stop and search around. There's no need to continue with the quiz or there's no time limit. You can at this point just go around and explore where Elvis recorded his first single. Very, very cool. Now I'll show you this. Um, you may not see this every now and then. I'll zoom in as close as I can get. You may see on my left hand side where I've got Google Maps open, um, half a tire wheel that's been cut off. <laughs> this is two images being spliced together. What a 3D camera does, it doesn't take one, well, the cameras of this time when they were taken, I don't know about current technology with cameras, um, they take several images at once and it pieces it together into one 3D image. Um, well, 300, 360 degree image. Um, the problem with that can be that because it's automated and there are so many images taken by Google Earth, they're not going to have one person piecing it all together. A computer will run it together um, and occasionally you will find things like this where the splicing for, um, hasn't gone very well um, and you'll get like a random tire wheel turning up <laughs> out of nowhere. It's a lot of fun to find these. Um, I actually think it's kind of cool to see the system and how it seems to work. Um, but you might see that and think it's strange. So that's the reason. It's just multiple images sticking together. Okay, let's leave Google Voyager. An additional, oh, sorry, to leave it, just press exit. It'll take you out. Let's keep going back. Here we go, back in Voyager, and we'll go out. Again, a lot of fun, heaps to explore. We won't go through it just right now today, um, but I'll zoom out, out of Memphis. And you might notice, again, our map is not orientated north. Click the little compass, it'll point it up the right way again. Excellent, a few other things to check out. Um, we've looked at projects again. I don't think we need to look into that today. It's got a little bit more, it's a bit tough, I'm gonna say. <laughs> and it's not in the Be Connected topic, so I don't have to cover it. So let's ignore that section. Um, but we will jump into the little dice roll. So this is called I'm Feeling Lucky. And what it does, it rolls the dice and just puts you into a random location. So if you can't think of where to go, oh, Battersea Power Station. Okay, cool. Um, hit the little button there and it'll take you through. My thingy, take hand objects off. There we go. Wow, that's impressive. Okay. <laughs> so again, you click the random roll of the dice button and it'll take you through to somewhere interesting. Battersea Power Station. A decommissioned coal-fired power station. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> and again, you can read about it on that little Wikipedia article. And you can click right into a Wikipedia article from those little title. They have a name. Title tab page. It's not what it's called. Project page. Anyway, that's one way to do it. And there's also map style. So these are just a few other settings you can adjust won't necessarily change too much of how you work it, but it will change how you view it. So you can go through four different map styles, clean, exploration, everything, and customized. So clean, um, when you zoom out, 
it won't have any borders it'll just be earth um, as seen from space no lines no borders no roads or through our roads no roads marked in yellow for example let's go somewhere we recognize I zoom all the way up to this here we go Australia no markings no names very simple very cool then you can change your view again exploration that's what we normally have it's got borders on it it's got names and then everything throws down landmarks water mass bodies for some reason and a few extra things so if you don't mind a sort of cluttered map to view you can do that one and of course customize opens up would you like clouds would you like borders so i'm going to leave it back on exploration which is the original setting i'm just going to leave that on right off right now and you can even turn on animated clouds i think that's so cool let's do that so 3d buildings are on and if i zoom out our cloud should start moving it is very slow and subtle there we go but they're showing the last 24 hours of cloud coverage so you can see a <laughs> cloud bank cresting past Adelaide here. No, I'm not a weather person. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. And those are the major settings you can change from the map here. Closing that again, you can even measure distance. So say you're planning a trip, you want to know how far it is from somewhere like, I zoom in, can't click and drag, here we go, from Adelaide, to Melbourne, you click on one, one place, drag a line across, and we'll just say Melbourne here. So it's about 642 kilometers approximately. That's me just dragging from above, but you can zoom in and you can really measure that distance there. And then to Ballarat and back, that's the total distance for the whole trip. So you can plan a trip, plan how far you have to drive, calculate your petrol usage if you really feel like that's something you want to do. You can do that as well. Um, and then you can even get the area space. That is so cool. <laughs> Having a great time here. Okay, we'll close that off again. Hit the little ruler symbol to get rid of it again, if you're not interested. And I think we're gonna check out Google Arts now. So that's about all I can show you on Google Earth without going through everything and spending a lot of time with it. Let's jump onto Google Arts. So if I skip back to my other page. There we go. So Google Arts and Culture. Again, it's a subsidiary. It's a friend of Google um, Earth and Google Voyager. Google Arts and Culture is its own separate app, um, own website app. I've got it up on the device here. Let me bring it over for you. Um, unlike Google Earth, Google Arts and Culture is available on any browser. So if you have an um, aversion to Chrome for some reason, it can be put onto Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, whatever you're used to using. So for me on my tablet, the symbol is, as you see in the web, in my page here, um, a blue little column museum looking structure. I'm gonna tap on that there. And it brings up, let me do it on the screen for you. <laughs> A lot easier that way. So we're back on Google Earth. Um, Google Arts and Culture. Easy to find. Just type Google Arts and Culture into either your App Store if you're looking to get it as an app on a tablet, or type it into Google on your browser. This is the sort of thing that just runs through a browser really easily. Um, a great program just to pick up and go with. Um, so it starts off. You've got several tabs at the top and a hamburger menu on the left hand side again you can go through this and spend hours here um, I have it's a lot of fun <laughs> a couple of things I'll show you that I'm really enjoying um, they bring up art pieces museum showings cultural movements everything so if we hit over go over to explore so they'll give you all these extra suggested sections here but if we go into explore you can have a look at the different categories and the types of viewing experience you can look at. For example, we have art camera. What this does, I'll open it up for you. It has, they've all taken, sorry, Google's taken images of famous artworks. So if you can't visit the Louvre, Louvre, Louvre in France, <laughs> sorry, pronunciation is terrible, the Louvre in France, you'll be able to look at the Mona Lisa up close. So let's say, 
I mean, you can look at the pearl with the girl, girl with the pearl earring, for example. These are all ones I recognize that I'm pointing out. Let's do a Monet. Let's jump into Art Up Close, zoom into Claude Monet. Incredible. And what these are, these are sort of curated works that you can explore. And these are just paintings themselves and you can really get up close. And you get similar to what you'd have at an actual gallery. Off to the side, you'll have a little descriptor of the painting, um, when it was made, the name, the gallery that owns it sort of thing. Um, and it'll give you extra information about it. So as I'm scrolling through here, I'm just scrolling through. It's sort of giving an explored, exploratory look at the actual piece. And it's going into extra detail that maybe you wouldn't appreciate without a guide with you at the museum or the art gallery. So you can zoom through and it's taking through, taking you through um, things you may not have noticed, things you may have noticed and appreciate more now that they've been talked about here. So zoom, 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 and it'll zoom all the way in as close as it can get. Um, on my screen, it's extremely high resolution. It looks brilliant. I can see all the paint strokes, the smears, everything. Um, on yours, viewing it through zoom, it might be a little blurry, but take my word for it, it's extremely clear, very, very cool, as if you had your nose up to the page, um, the canvas itself. So I'm just scrolling through all the way to the bottom. There you go. And it gives the credits at the very end, which I appreciate. So if we go back one screen, I'm just going to click the back button, easiest way to get through. So that's art camera. You can pick um, any piece that you're interested in. I wonder if I can just look up. Hmm. Let's do the Mona Lisa. Sorry, it's one word. I feel so silly. Here we go, the Mona Lisa. And it has several versions of her. Okay, we'll leave that for now. So we'll go back to home. Actually, we'll go back to explore and we'll look at different versions of what you can check out. So again, much like Google Earth, they have a street view version. So a version where you're standing in the location looking around with a 360 camera. Um, but you can do it inside famous landmarks. So we'll click on street view on this far side. Again, I'm just going into the explore tab and jumping onto the right hand part street view. And these are their famous landmarks and tour sites. And you can pick just about anywhere. Um, they've got a huge range of locations, places you never think to explore, like the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Um, if you're interested in what sports look like when no one's there, <laughs> You can jump into that. I think this was actually taken on a game day. Let's have a look. So clicking into this brings you into what you would sort of recognize as a regular Google Street View that we had on Google Maps. So again, I'm just going to click and drag to view around. And this is obviously done on a day when Noah was playing. Um, I'd love to see a mid-match person with a camera running into the center of the game, but <laughs> doesn't sound very safe. And you can go for a walk the around the whole stadium. See where everything looks like up close. What I didn't mention earlier is that you can zoom while in the street view ver version. Um, on a device, it's gonna be that pinching motion again, but on your computer, it's a scroll wheel or the little plus and minus symbol in the bottom right hand corner, several different ways. So I'm gonna zoom in here. You can see all the chairs, very cool. <laughs> Not as interesting as I was hoping, but we'll go back out. And you can pick several different locations. Let's go to the Taj Mahal. Let's have a look. Let's see if it wants to load for me. Oh, oh, it's just very, very small. Okay, let me retry that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, I might have to zoom out of that one. It looks like it's loading in my right hand corner very more. Let's do the Palace of Versailles. See if that's any different. I wonder if my computer is just having a hard time right now. Okay, it might have been the Taj Mahal material. I might come back to that later. I'd love to see that. Um, but you can travel through the halls of Versailles, places where cameras have been allowed to walk through. Um, maybe places necessarily um, the general public isn't able to go through. Google's been given permission to have someone come through um, and Take images. So what you can do here again is zooming in. I think that's a great time when you've got such fairly high resolution images, you can get very close. Um, and again, clicking on the floor, you'll see these little arrows turning up. So as I move my cursor side to side, the arrow ever so slightly changes angle. 
and that indicates where it's going to be taking you to. So there's a little cross symbol under this table. I wonder if that takes us right to the table. It does. Very cool. You'll see this little rectangle appear as I'm sliding up my little cursor along the wall. It's um, letting you know there's a plane there, like a plane of dimension, um, and that you can't click through it because it is a wall. And it knows that to be a wall because it took the photo there and it went, this is a wall, this is the floor. And it very um, intelligently does so. So it's always pretty spot on, I'd say. Yeah, you can have a walk through and at the bottom, it gives you separate images and different locations you can skip through to. So here you can look at King Louis, for example, painting of him, and you can zoom in. Because they're fairly high resolution images, the pictures you zoom in on are gonna look pretty good. Not as great as the images we saw before, um, where you could zoom in all the way, like with that Monet painting. Um, but this way you can get a real sense for the scope of everything. Um, and get a walk and have a walk around, especially somewhere like Versailles when so much is packed into one place. Um, it's a museum in and of itself, so it's great fun to look at, um, including the ceiling. The coolest part of these is that they're not limited to just you know, craning your neck one way or the other. You can look right up and you can enjoy the intricacies of the ceilings, which oof, I love it. <laughs> so cool. Always fun. And you can orientate yourself and spin around to try and get that image just right and then zoom in again. So I'm using the compass here. Um, when you're doing a tour like this, the compass isn't just going to tip it back to north when you click it. You can orientate yourself however you'd like by rotating the view, clicking the down side arrows to twist it one way or the other. So here I was able to orientate my painting that I was viewing. Um, rather than it be upside down, I can see it as it was intended as you turned your head in real life. <laughs> So we'll jump out of that. Um, I'll just see if the Taj Mahal is going to work for me. Nope, it's the top hand corner. Okay. I might have to reload later on to try that out. Um, yeah, it's not coming up right now. So again, we're looking at virtual tours. So there's several different tours you can look through that come up just as the recommended tours, not even ones that you've typed in and looked up yourself. If there's anywhere you're curious about, please pop in a little search inquiry up in the top right hand corner and have a search um, and even nearby if you give it your location so if I were to click nearby it's going to ask um, artsandculture.google.com wants to know your location I'm going to block it I'm going to say no <laughs> you can absolutely if you feel comfortable doing that say yes and it'll find museums local art near your, near your area um, I've done it before and it's all in Adelaide stuff they haven't got anything particularly um, local to Hallett Cove or Marion. Um, it's all over in Adelaide with the museums and the art galleries, which is great to have, of course. Um, and it's really cool to go through there and see what was there on the day they took photos. Um, things change and shift around, so it's really cool to see that. Um, so I'm glad it's there, even if it's not like, we don't have local museums in my area for the most part. So maybe the Botanic Gardens, I have to check that out. I have a feeling it's there. So, um, and extra thing you can do which I don't know if you can do here I'm going to click on experiments I saw it and I have to click it here we go <laughs> everyone we're learning together <laughs> oh very cool I love that okay sorry just exploring by myself let me come back to everybody here um, another thing you can do which I love showing to people you can do it on a tablet device. I've not seen it yet on a desktop computer, but on a tablet, a phone, iPhone, iPad sort of setup, you can do it. So let me show you this. Great time, lots of fun. And we'll finish up soon, everyone. I won't hold you for much longer than this. Um, so when you're looking at Google Arts and Culture on a tablet, iPad, phone, at the bottom, very hard to see because I've not got my screen set up properly here. Here we go. There is this little camera image with a color wheel around it. When you click that, it'll allow you to take a picture of your own art, own face, whatever you're using, and it can make it either an art piece out of it, it can find your own um, art selfie, where it'll match your face with a piece of art. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna click art selfie, and it's asking me to take a photo of my own face. So here I am, take a photo here. 
There we go. Are you awkwardly taking a photo? What it's doing now is searching for images that are similar in famous old art pieces. Sorry, the old didn't need to be said there. Um, famous art pieces and seeing what my face looks like. <laughs> um, and what similar art you can find. This is a lot of fun. It really is just kind of a goof. It's not necessarily um, going to find um, yourself in a painting, though depending on how well you take an image, it can find you. Um, I have a few redheads coming up, which is nice. It seems to have noticed that. Let's view this artwork of supposedly someone who looks like me. I don't know if this is flattering or not. <laughs> so I'll let it load through. If it will. Maybe my internet's being slow today. That's okay. Well, that's just one thing you can do on the tablet version. Let's jump back out to viewing an art gallery. So, say we'd love to go into. Oops, I'm going to open and close it. <laughs> Behaving a bit slowly, and I'd like to up it up the speed. So what you can do with this, similar to what you do on your desktop computer in the regular browser view, is you can go on a virtual tour of a location, but it uses augmented reality. Maybe not augmented reality. It understands which way you're tilting your camera in order for you to explore it. So let's see if I can find it again. I'm going to do a explore tour of the Sydney Opera House. So there are these circular symbols. Again, very hard for you to see here. I apologize and they offer tours of different locations. So I'm gonna jump into the Sydney Opera House. And from here, it's gonna, it's gonna know where I'm tilting my camera and in order for me to move around. So rather than clicking and scrolling, you're using your actual movement of your camera using gy gyroscopic sensors that are in devices that know when they're being dropped and things like that. Um, you can move around a screen. Let me turn on my brightness for you. I don't know if this will help or not. And you can view a theater as if you were there in person, looking up. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work with my keeping it in view for you, looking down. And of course, you can still click around to move location, for example, or at the very bottom, we've got a tab, I can't sort of show you quite well, a whole different section of different locations you can explore, jumping into those, and again, moving around there. It's a lot of fun, really is quite cool. And I think that might be the last thing that I was looking to show you guys today. Um, there is so much more to explore on these apps and programs, and I recommend looking through them. Um, you could spend hours on these, honestly. You could find your new favorite hobby here, um, new favorite location, things you love to visit. Visit old places from your childhood. Have a look around. Um, visit old museums that maybe you don't get to go to anymore, places like that. Okay, we're going to open it up to questions. Thank you all for sitting with me for almost an hour. Goodness, um, we've done quite well today. So please, if anyone has a question, a comment, anything like that, please pop it into the Q&A section or the chat section now. Don't know how many of you have fallen asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Try to keep it light and entertaining. Um, but please, if you do have a question, pop it into the Q&A section. Otherwise, we'll finish up for the day. So I'll open up my questions box and I'll see if I've got any. They can be off the wall questions. They don't necessarily have to be directly related to the programs we did today. Ah, so what someone has asked, I'll answer this live. What was that picture of your face thing called in the arts and culture app? So I'll open it up again so I can recognize what it was called. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I see. So no necessary like no app you can actually find goodness how do i set this up okay so what you can see i'll have to explain it i'll show you tilted at this angle at the very bottom of your arts and culture screen there'll be a little camera symbol sitting just above the very bottom of your device so for me it looks like a small camera with a color wheel around it so when you see that click that one and it'll give you options to take photos of your own art, to project art into reality, for example. Um, I would love to use my augmented reality system, but apparently it's not supported on my device. Oof. What it's called is Art Selfie. So once you've clicked that little camera image at the bottom of your screen, oh, it's so tough to show, it's called Art Selfie. So from clicking that, it opens your front facing camera, or if you've only got the back facing, you just have to turn around, aim really well. 
And what it gives you is a square in the center of your screen where you line up your face. You do that, take a photo. So I'll do that one more time. I'll face this way so you get my background. Like so. So I've taken an image of myself. <laughs> I look quite shocked. Oh, I got a portrait of a man. <laughs> And you can flick through and see what percentage are you similar in Google's eyes to these images. Well, that's not so bad. I've got a lovely young maiden looking person here. Very cool. A few blue eyed redheads. Love that. It's very clever in that way. And then you can, of course, open up the art piece. So sorry, that was angle. Learn more about it. And you can view the artwork. So that's what's called. It's called the art selfie. There we go. Not a problem. Thank you, Chris. So Chris has just given us a little a thank you for that one. I'm very glad that you were able to watch it, Chris. Thanks so much. And it, yeah, I love being able to open up new ideas to people and showing them different things that you really wouldn't be able to get into by yourself. So um, I'm glad I had a look through that. Beautiful. Thanks, Chris. And we've all got some lovely comments in the chat. Guys, you are so lovely. Wonderful. Oh, we've got a beautiful one from Fiona. Thank you so much for your lesson. Oh, able to replay the lesson. Okay. Um, I have been recording it at this point. It still says it's recording. That's good. Um, the only problem is with a recorded episode like this is that it becomes quite large. So I'd love to email it to you. Um, but emailing won't allow that. So I may even look into possibly sharing it online somehow, making it available. Otherwise, what I can recommend, and I can email this information to you. Let me jump back over to my screen. Here we go. I can recommend jumping into, again, Be Connected, going into Courses, and going through. So I'll show you exactly how you get there if you're interested in doing it online. Um, otherwise, shoot me an email or give us a call. Um, I might even get your details, Fiona, and then we'll send it through. I can send you through all this extra information. Um, but do jump onto Be Connected. Um, scroll down to Topic Library, which actually, depending on the size of your screen, might be at the top. Here we go. Topic Library. And go into All Topics. So scrolling through. This was part of Online Hobbies, as I looked at at the beginning. So we scroll all the way down. And we'll explore Online Hobbies. So click this Explore button and then jump into exploring Google Earth. What I've gone through is just a very general skimming of this, but each of these sections has a small video that'll go through it for you. So just as I have, um, but with nicer graphics, nice and slow, and you can pick exactly what you wanna learn about. So say you were, okay, let's go back one. We'll do arts and culture. So in Beyond Google Earth is where we learned about arts and culture, the app. So you can jump into their videos that they offer. So here's one called Embrace Google Arts and Culture. And what it'll do, explain what's coming up and it'll go through even, oh, it's not a video this time. It's similar to mine. It's a very short slideshow and it explains it in more detail. So anything I might've missed or skimmed over too quickly, it'll be there in the Be Connected app, website, Be Connected website. Otherwise, do give us a call and I'll be able to get your information and we'll send you through some more stuff. Um, I'll just see, I'll ask around and I'll see what I can do about putting the video online somewhere or sending it to people so they can view it in their own time. Um, but I'll have to double check with that Fiona. But thank you for the question. Beautiful. Oh, here we go. Ben's given us an answer. I think we can put these on Facebook. Wonderful. Very good. <laughs> yes, Denise, I would, I would agree. <laughs> this will, um, yeah, keep you at home rather than sending you out to the great wild world. It'll keep you entertained while at home. Well, Fiona, it seems like we can put this on Facebook, so I might have to go back and edit it a little bit, but we'll see how that goes. Um, thank you, everyone, so much for attending. You've been a wonderful bunch of people listening and um, asking brilliant questions. Um,